Oh, there it goes. Perfect. And boom, we're live. Well, tonight's guest, and I think it was quite appropriate, really, seeing I'm talking to Derek from, um, you know, Solo Works. I think I, you know, took took this outside and faced the grim sort of uh, Scottish weather. But it's hey, the, sun, the sky is blue, but the the wind never stops up here. So, <laughs> before we go any further, Derek, how are we doing tonight, Derek? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on on the show. Well, before we go any further, maybe give um, people who are listening for the first time, give me a sort of a brief uh, overview of how you sort of got into the whole solar works. Um, well, uh, when I was at university, I was studying uh, environmental science and philosophy. So I learned how to uh, hang out and BS in the woods really well. <laughs> uh, but I didn't learn a lot of, I needed to do something practical with my hands to help solve the environmental problems we were learning about. And um, I got lucky enough in my senior year internship to uh, install some solar panels with a local fella. And so he kind of taught me the beginnings of the trade. Uh, this was in 2000, 2001, right as solar was starting to kind of peek into the U.S. market a little bit. And um, anyway, I kind of fell in love with it at university. And then after that, after school, I, I just traveled around with my dogs and my truck and was a climbing bum for a while. And then, uh, which was great. And then I wound up in sunny Southwest Colorado and there wasn't, it hadn't taken off yet. Um, and so I just figured if you build it, they will come. So I started solar works cause as the name says, it works where we are. So, uh, that was 11 years ago, 11 years ago, next month. So the first sort of question I, I, feel, I feel that needs to be asked is, and you know, what would you, what would you think the biggest developments in solar power has been in, in, the, in the time that you since you've been you first started off to where we are now wow uh that's a great question um panels themselves have more than doubled in efficiency um and their their wattage output per panel um when i started we were doing panels that were 150 watts was a lot that was like the efficient panel and now we're doing typically 300 watts so in 10 years we've seen the doubling of them at the same time we've seen the costs go down by i forget the number but probably 85 percent um you know when when i first started we were buying panels for between four four fifty and five dollars per watt uh us and now we're at 50 cents a watt per panel so the the prices have just come down and made the economics that much better um inverter technology has gotten a lot better um and we've seen kind of a a streamlining of the industry and we've seen the industry become uh going from the fringe to the mainstream and so i think that solar wind batteries the whole thing it, renewables are here to stay you know we're we're competing against fossil fuels neck and neck exactly now i think um, this is one of the um insights really on the development because i i give you a bit of a personal reflection i mean i was living down in venezuela in in you know late last millennium early this millennium and obviously when you're living as you can imagine in somewhere that's got so much sunshine like venezuela that you know there was a great drive to get uh, to get solar panels and so many you know we were up in the, in the grand savannah as it's called which is an, a, a, a kind of elevated mountain region and they were desperate to get solar panels but the the, the the thing that was prohibitive then was basically the cost the cost was an extraordinary amount of now a uh, reason i mentioned this and i i i think this is uh, kind of alludes to what you were just saying because at the, the time then the cost was extraordinary and i've always thought looking back at it now like wow the people that bought in early must have really kind of been i've had it hard i've had it tough really because they bought it at a very high price and the technology was kind of basic and now obviously like with all things they've got they've got better and you know yeah. more, more efficient but yep. the but the the one with the price do you, do you think we're actually going to get to a point where price doesn't actually become a, a, a relative thought process on this because it is always the one that people go like i love the idea i love the concept i've got it's great and they're they're extend all the greatness of it and then it's always that price barrier and I, I, I know you said that price has come down but do you ever think it's going to come down to a price where a point where it won't even be an issue and it won't even be a discussion um i think we're really close to that point right now um at least in the us uh it's hard to say with other markets um 
from my understanding in a lot of other markets like Venezuela, uh, Costa Rica, these other places we've looked at doing overseas projects, the cost of getting the panels to the site and the duties and taxes that the country puts on imports is really what's killing it. We can buy the panels for cheap, but if we can't get them there or the government is gonna tax us at such a high rate, that's the hard part. In the US, we're already to that point where we're competing, we're competing or less than most utilities. So it's a no brainer to go solar. It's still an investment. You still have to, uh, you still have to outlay something, but you're getting some, you're getting a much larger return. Exactly. And I think the other thing that's obviously developed, um, in a, you know, in a, and I suppose it's always a constant, you know, on a, mo on a progression forward has been the, the, the Again, because most people would would associate solar panels. I can maybe only speak from, from over here. Most people would show solar panels ones that you get big panels and you stick on your roof. And but there's also different sort of you know divergent paths now. I mean, you, you're talking. I mean, you, you're doing thermal solar now. Now, for people who've never even heard of thermal solar, what is thermal solar? Yeah. Um, well, in fact, um, solar thermal is actually getting less and less um, because. The, the economics of the photovoltaics, the electric solar panels, have become so much better. Um, solar thermal is a very efficient thing to use. You know, just think of passive solar for your house. You know, put your house facing south, let the sunshine come in and heat it. Um, with solar thermal, the, generally you have some panels on the roof, or if you're in a, a country like Venezuela, or really anywhere south of the border where you don't have freezing temperatures, you see big black buckets, for lack of a better term, on the roofs. That's how people get their hot water, and you know, a majority of the people in the world get their hot water. Oh wow! So that's 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 a, that's, a, that's something that most people again. It's all about climate. Now, one of the things that yep. obviously, and I'm sure you have it all the time, and people are like <laughs> the solar panel one. People always go, "Oh, that's great!" If I live in some hot country that's got you know sunshine 24/7, and it's always that kind of thing. Oh, it, Again, let's just go back to being real. I mean, here I am yeah. in Scotland. I mean, yeah, we'll have lots of daylight, and particularly through the summer. Yeah. But again, the question that always people, you know, well, you know, I've been asked to ask you, you know, it's like, well, okay, I, I love the idea of solar. I can, but is it, are we at the point where place people like me in environments where we haven't got, you know, 24, you know, a lot of sunshine coming in on, you know, over, over a great period and it's a lot of heat. Do we, is, is, is the technology to the point where it's, it's even worth exploring to people like who live in you know places like I am in Scotland and you know the northern tips and their areas like that. I mean, are, are where how close would you say we're, we're we're to that point where it's actually worth investing for people in my kind of part, part of the world? Well, look at Germany for example. Um, everybody knows Germany's kind of always been the leader in solar. In general, there uh, they call it insulation the the amount of sunshine that hits there is equivalent to uh, Portland or Seattle in, a, in America. So they do not have the best solar uh, uh, values coming in, but yet they are harvesting so much more solar energy than any other country in the world. Um, up until recently, the US and I think now China have just passed Germany um, in what's being deployed. For your neck of the woods, um, and, and I'm seeing it in Norway and Sweden. Um, so the, no, the northern climates are getting more, uh, they're moving more towards solar because those economics have gotten better. The technology has also gotten better. There are some types of panels that will absorb more energy on a cloudy day than others. Uh, it's not saying that direct sunlight wouldn't give them more, but they are good at harvesting what little comes through your cloudy, <laughs> your cloudy Scottish skies. Well, again, and this is uh, one of the developments, and, and I, I, I'm fascinated to know what you thought about this, and you know, obviously, you know, your, your experience and your insights. Where do you think this is all going? Because I mean, I, I've read articles, and, and again, it's like luck of the world itself. You read so many stuff, and you, and you think, okay, and then you. you well, it, will that happen? Will it happen? I don't know. But I mean, for instance, I've been mean, I've read a few articles about solar paint and how we could just paint buildings and that you know that the, we could do it down to that level. And I mean, where do you, I mean again, where do you think this is all sort of going to go? If I was to talk to you in five, ten years, where where do you think the general progression of, of solar is going? Um, 
I think there's a lot of, there will continue to be a lot of research and development into things like the paints, uh, printable panels, uh, clear window panes that can absorb energy. Um, there'll be that, that research and development and I think that it will, we will get products that do those things. However, I don't think they will be as, mm, as efficient or cost competitive until they can really break into a market and do it more effectively than the panels we have now, which are also getting better on a trajectory of just getting more efficient and cheaper as well. So what we have that's tried and true, the panels that we have, um, those, like I said, they've doubled in 10 years. They're gonna get more efficient. Um, the big thing that I see happening is you know, battery storage technology mm -hmm. uh, for residential, for commercial, and for utility are all gonna, that's gonna take solar and wind into the next, uh, the next tier, if you will the next generation, because really that's what, that's the argument that's been holding back uh, utilities and governments and different things from saying, oh yeah, yeah, we'd love to go solar, but what about when the sun doesn't shine? What about when it's nighttime? If you have the battery storage capacity to be able to back up the solar, they can work hand in hand and just feed the grid. And, and what I see is energy sharing. So we'll have a distributed grid where solar batteries on my house and your house and your neighbor's house will all be working together and we'll still have a central grid system in there as well. And so we can all have this, the smart grid that they keep talking about. That smart grid will rely on, on solar batteries. Electric vehicles will also be a part of that because electric vehicles can charge and discharge in, in a building as well. Um, that's where I see it really going in the next 10 years. I, 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 I totally concur with you. And I mean, I, I, I look around right now and I, I, I just think there's so much utter madness going on. I mean, I, I, all the street signs and I think, well, why have we got power generating these lights that are orange, but nobody actually wants to glow anyway. That's another story, but you know, why yeah. don't they just have a little solar panel? On top? There's so much of like you're saying, I mean, I think the other thing as well, and I'm, I'm, I, someone, you, you probably know the figures more than me, but isn't it? I mean, I, I've read figures that it's so ridiculously minuscule the amount of solar panels and, and energy that we could actually use to, to, to basically just cure all the problems that we've got. It's actually very small. And then you think about how much land is, like I say, I mean, I was, I was again, maybe you can give me a more clarifying yep. insight, but places like Las Vegas, I've heard they're starting to put rings of solar powers around and they've actually started to feed the municipal city. You think this is so simple to do. And it's yep. just. It's just a, it's just the case, literally, of cost and getting it out there, isn't it? So it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I think um, I can remember when when I was younger and you know global warming and was kind of the buzzword, right? And and now it's climate change and just environmental problems in general. I can remember being a kid and being in school, and they would always say, "Don't worry, we're humans. We'll we'll adapt. We'll make technology. We'll get better at it." And not that I think that's an excuse to let us pollute and do things uh, that are harmful to the environment, but it does, we do have the ability to make the solutions that we need. And so we have them, like, let's just start using them. And like you said, if it's coming down to money, now we're seeing the, the investment bankers invest in renewables. We're seeing Department of Defense, uh, you know, the, the Air Force bases are going solar. Um, cities, like you said, we can build these in the into the infrastructure. Um, it's funny you mentioned street lights. Um, a friend of mine in China that helped me develop my, my mojo box and my mobile solar, the smaller stuff, his company, that's what they do is they make solar powered street lights. And primarily they're for places, uh, you know, that don't have a good, a good grid or, you know, it's hard to get electric lines underneath the concrete or whatever. Um, but I've often thought that if, you know, in America and, you know, Scotland, England, they're already there, put the panels on the top and feed that power to the grid. You know, there's plenty of, plenty of innovative places to do it. And if you can show, at least in America, <laughs> where everything's very capitalistic based, if you can show a profit or you can show some money or there can be a business around it, the technologies 
speak for themselves. They, they'll just work and people will make money. There will be jobs. We can offset the horrible things we've been doing to the climate. Oh, I, I totally concur with you. It goes back to what we were saying earlier on. I mean, that's the point. If you're an early adopter in anything, maybe you are, you are taking the risk of paying over the odds and getting a not so good product. But yeah. it's those. But, but in time, man, it's like now. I always think. Well, I, I I kind of think those people that did that, they're kind of they're the people we should kind of like you know give a tip of the nod to really because those people that have led yeah. us to where we are right now. And it's always like you say, it's just about putting it out into numbers and stuff, you know, and putting it out into distribution. Now. On a really technical level, I've always been fascinated. And I think someone on, you know, who's actually kind of working in the industry. What what is the actual? How does? I mean, all right, people know solar panels, and they think, okay, it, you know, the, the sun will heat up that, and that will, you know, give me electricity. How, okay, but how does that technically work? I mean, how what, what's actually technically going on? So the sun is hit, the rays are hitting this panel. Then what happens? Sure, uh, that's a great question. Um, so PV panels, photovoltaics. Uh, generally speaking, are made with silicon. Silicon is comes from sand. It's the second most abundant thing we have besides carbon. So we aren't going to run out of it. And it's pretty easy to find, right? There's sand everywhere. The electrons of silicon get very excited when you they get hit with photons uh, from the sun. And different uh, different spectrums of light, mainly the visible part of those photons, excite those electrons in the silicon. And every cell just releases its electrons. You aggregate all of those electrons uh, through the wires of the panels. And then you basically, as they get spit out of the panel, they go from one panel to the next panel to the next panel. And you put them in a, in a series. And it builds up the voltage. And it builds up the amperage. And then you run that through an inverter, which takes that current. That current's all, all DC, direct current, like a battery. And so you have to run that through an inverter um, that'll turn it into household AC current that we, we use on a regular basis. Does that kind of answer it? it? Yeah, it does indeed. And, and, and I think on the base, back of that as well, I mean, what's the, and I think I, I have to, you know, I think it's always relevant to ask these questions because, you know, obviously people will be very attracted towards solar panel because of the green element of it and all the rest of it. But I mean, it's, it's a real question. What's the manufacturing process like? I mean, is it, is it, I mean, is it a quite a, a green efficient end of the production line or is this kind of, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of maybe okay. pull it, ask, ask to pull the cur curtains down on your yeah. industry a bit, but you know, no, I think it's a relevant no, question. It's a great question. It's really important because it used to be that panels would take about, I think the number was about eight, seven to eight years um, of their own energy production to offset the energy that went into building. Now, my understanding is that we're down to less than two years and it's closer to one year wow. of, of production. Now, we do have, um, there's a lot that goes into a solar panel. You know, there's a lot of extractive industries that, um, from mining the metals, uh, the silicon itself, processing that, uh, the glass that goes on to encapsulate it, aluminum in the frames, copper in the wires, and uh, silver in the solder that puts it all together. There are a lot of things in there, um, but the fact that it's something that can create energy that offsets what went into it, there's very few things that you can say that, you know, that, that what it what the final product is more than more than makes up for what went into okay cool and i i, yeah. I think the one of the things yeah, completely. I think I think one of the things that I, I, I think has always inspired me the most about just the, the whole area of solar panels and, and just generally about making you, you know, trying to get as much energy as, from, you know, natural ways as possible is beyond all the, the benefits of what it does to this planet and now we're not polluting and all that. That's 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 a great side benefit. But I think the great thing about it is it it, it strengthens the mindset of just looking after yourself and being into, and I don't mean that in a selfish, you know, it's all, you know, stab each other. I mean, in the sense of, don't be reliant because one of the things that, and I, I, I always love to give this reflection, it goes back to when I was living in Venezuela. People are, are so, especially in our parts of the world, my friend, they're so kind of just thinking, oh, well, it, it just happens. I'm always going to turn the tap on, there's going to be water. I'm always going to turn my, my boiler on and there'll be hot water, you know, hot, you know, hot in my house. It's just we become so normalized to it. And then you realize that 
these structures that we're getting all the power from are so actually intrinsically centralized and easy to break down. So when I, like I say, when I lived in Venezuela, we, the people there were used to rolling blackouts. It was just a constant daily. Now we right. don't because we live in it, but but the same it's so fragile. That's why I think it's really important to, that's what I love about, as I was saying before, that, that any technology, anything that's going to empower people to say, look, look, you've got to be self-reliant. I mean, it's one of the things I love. I mean, I don't know if you're aware, in Australia, it's one of the great differences between my part of the world and Australia. I mean, in Australia, you have to have, they say to you, if you want to have a house, you've got to have your own water supply, you've got to have your own sewage, you've got to look after your own, you know, that's, I think it's really important because I, I say all this because I don't think people realise how vulnerable our, you know, our systems are, and they just think it's just going to go on and on and on. And I'm sure you could give some insights of like how weak it all is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, perfect example. We, like you said, we're not used to rolling brownouts, blackouts, whatever you want to call them. Uh, when power goes out at our at our house, it went out. I don't know. It doesn't stay out very long. We're we're a pretty reliant system, but it goes out, and my kid. It's like, where's all the power, Dad? What? Why doesn't it? You know, where? Where did it go? And so, to get people's mindset to change that, you know, that's a centralized system. If it goes down, you're without. And whether that's your water, your sewer, your trash, your electricity, everything we take for your internet, you we take all those systems for granted. And so, it's important if you can be self reliable to do that. The, it's easy for us to talk about that where we are in Colorado because we're generally a, a very rural area. Um, and it's it, people here, people in rural areas, I think the world over are used to being more self-reliant and uh, building on whatever they have available. But the people in the cities, I think, are the ones that are the most vulnerable. And so how do we, how do we make them realize what they have and what they what they could go with and without you know how do we make them resilient and that's a great problem it is indeed but that's just as i said before that's a step-by-step -step process and i think if we'd had this conversation in 1999 man it would have been a, we would have looked at a different world and I, I, that's what i'm saying i think it's always important to highlight how how much progression has been made because the fact that we're even having this discussion it's not just a few kind of like idealistic kippies sat around like discussing <laughs> solar panels in the late 90s man <laughs> so i mean one of the things that i i again i I think I really wanted to discuss with you. You briefly mentioned earlier on was your Mojo Box. Now, for someone like a, you know, I, I I've spent a lot of time. I love I love being outside, you know, and I like and it's always frustrated me of like why can't I just have a stuff that I'm listening to powered by solar? So then I, then I you know obviously you heard about what you're doing Mojo Box. So for again, so give us a bit of an insight into you know how did Mojo Box and yeah, how did the Mojo Box idea come around and and again yeah. what what overview of what the product is. Yeah. Um, so, uh, where do I start? Um, <laughs> I guess it came about because uh, when I was going camping with my family and friends, uh, I was carrying around a box that was my phone, a small speaker, a place to put my stuff, a flashlight, you know, basic stuff like that. I, and I was carrying it around in a pretty good sized box and I, I thought, well, Maybe I can make a better one. <laughs> you can always build a better mousetrap, right? Is what everybody thinks. Um, so, so we started playing around, and, and I had some extra uh, space at my office to to dedicate towards inventions, I guess. And so we tried to make the idea lab, and we we were like, what can we make? What what, what, what should we do first? And so we came up with the Mojo Box. Um, I've got one here to show you. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, this is the front side of it. This is all; these are all solar panels or solar cells. It's hard to see it, but it's about three and a half watts of solar, and it recharges a, a big battery bank inside. So that battery bank, like I said, your your phone goes dead, and you're out there in the wilderness or whatever, or you're just camping and you just want to charge your phone so you can take pictures. It's got charge ports, USB ports on the on the front there. And so you can recharge two devices on it. It has two Bluetooth speakers, uh, and it also has a flashlight on the front. Uh, I'll show you the flashlight. So it's got a flashlight. Everything's all in one spot. Um, and it also comes with a box to put all your stuff in. 
So you can charge the Mojo Box from the wall, but I haven't plugged mine in in about a year because if you just leave it in the sunshine, it takes care of itself. Um, so that's kind of where it started and what we thought we could do with it. So again, I mean, um, what kind of volume uh, levels you get out of that? I mean, again, because I've, <laughs> I say this, because when, you, when you're in the middle of nowhere, you kind of think, well, okay, I, I've deliberately walked out into the middle of this countryside and I, I want to, you know, you know, not play it at a four and five. So what kind of, I mean, what kind of amp are you getting out of this? Um, the speakers are two four watt speakers. Um, so it plays pretty loud. Uh, <laughs> from a long ways away uh i don't it fills it fills my house uh my office and anywhere we camp outside it it covers over i've had it at the ocean you know the ocean's often really loud with the waves um so you can hear it on the beach uh everybody that has one's really impressed with it um so now it's just trying to build that brand and get it out into the world which is actually the hard part building it was easy <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, yes, my friend. That's like a, like with any many many things. I mean, having the idea and all that is great. But like I say, but I mean, I, I, I the minute I, I I came across the Mojo Box, I was thinking, well, if nothing else, I mean, the whole festival market, kids are gonna love that. I mean, that, that's just one. I mean, I was just thinking one area alone because kids are out yeah. there out out in, the, out in the field all weekend. They all love listening to that kind of stuff. And how many times? I mean, it's not. I don't know. I mean, not that I'm down with the kids, but I remember, you know, it must. It must be a common thing of people's electronics breaking down at festivals. And, hey, that can all be jokey, but I think that the, the element of all this is that you know, we, it's kind of like okay, well, some you know some hippie kids haven't got music, but there's a serious element to this because yeah. safety. I mean, this is this is one of the things. If as a parent, if I was thinking, okay, look, I always want to know my son or daughter's got a means of communication rather right. than oh, her, her battery went dead. So I think these are it's a it's a, you know it's good all round, man. But I think that must be a huge market. Yeah, I mean, the thought was. You know, I'm already carrying a power bank to charge my phone. I'm carrying a speaker. I'm carrying my phone. I'm carrying a light. I've got a place for my stuff. It's all in a big box. Let's just make it smaller and easier. And then, you know, the thought is we can scale that up and make other products that are similar. Um, like I said, it's just trying to get into that market and find more sales and make it grow. So we're starting really small and we're, you know, we do have them for sale on the internet. Um, but mainly we're just, we're in local stores and throughout Colorado, a couple other states, and we're just trying to throw it out. Well, I, I think this is, um, and I think it's like a, it's just, just a general insight of the times we live anyway. I mean, I'm sitting there and I have ever since I've heard about the Mojo Box thinking that in five or six years time, or just a matter of time in the future, is the, 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 the convergence of technology at the moment. I mean, I was thinking like, I mean, I don't know if you're aware of what we're doing with N99. I was thinking that that be this is boxes like that. We, we look at our end. We're, we're needing hardware. We're, that's to get. And and, it, it, and I'm trying to say we're living these great times where things are just springing up, and the, the, the cross pollination of ideas and and products is going to be. I think that I, I don't know. This is what enthuses me so much because, as I said before, I mean, 20 years ago, we you know we could have sat around and had this conversation. Now we can actually not only have this conversation, but these things up in a way that humans have never done before. I, that's what I, it, it really excites me at this because we can have these conversations across boundaries and and you know, like I say, twenty years ago this would have been the case of you know. Scotland and it, I'm in Colorado and we can see each other and talk and that's just amazing. And it's not only that; it's free for us to do this. You know, like this doesn't. It, it's a simple technology that you know twenty years ago is unimaginable. I mean, it, it was imaginable they had it on Star Trek, but nobody was using it. You know, we didn't have it in, in our hands. And now we kind of take it for granted. I mean, it's so easy to call you and say, hey, then how's it going? How's things in Scotland? <laughs> Exactly, and I think it goes back to what you, what, you know, what we were saying maybe in through this conversation. Really, I mean, I, I always look at it. Maybe this my how I look at things, but I think when, when if we'd all been, if I if I met you, you and Derek, when you're in a playground at six or seven, we would have sat there and thought, wait, there's a big ball of energy up there. Why are we all burning coal? We we we, we, we saw this as kids, and then we we grew into adulthood, and we think 
whoa, 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 whoa. And it's right. now, it's kind of like we're at that moment now where all us kids in the playground are going, wait, we're adults now. We can change this and we haven't got to sit around. and Because it's to me, it's just, I mean, I, I say that, but it is, if, a, if a five-year-old child can understand there's a big ball of energy out there, then, then how do people even, you know, not understand that? And that, that, to me, it's just... I think it's really great about it. Instead of this being like it was 20 years ago where the people who were in control of this were the suits and stuff, it's now me and you. And, and that to yeah. me is when we're seeing the true signs of a renaissance going on because it's, it's actually getting into the hands of the people. Right. Yeah, we're, we're getting it out there. And it's, it's really fun for me to go in and talk to the kids uh, at schools. And the kids just light up. I mean, mm. they, they get it. And, and I got it when I was a kid. I was why is there a sun and we're not using that? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just a no brainer. And you're telling me that burning fossil fuels is making pollution. Like when you're a kid, the sim the, it seems so simple. And so, like you said, now we're, we're, we're kind of in charge, right? So we're driving, we're driving that change. And then I really love going into the classroom and talking to little kids from kindergarten all the way through high school. And, you know, you change your, you change your uh, conversation based on their age, but ultimately they're all for the same thing. Like, yeah, let's get to that point. Let's, let's keep going in that direction. They see where we are and they're, let's just keep going, look forward, you know? Exactly, yep. my friend. I, I say this many times, and I think it's one of the things that you, you would know you've got children yourself. It's one of the things you need, but the moment you have a child and you bring another human being to this planet, you start to realize that, okay, there's going to come a point where they're going to judge me like I judge my granddad and my <laughs> and, that, and then you've got to be wary because, and I, I, I jest about this a lot, but I mean, that should just be a, a general one for all people. They should just be wary about, you know, the, 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 like you said, progression goes on. But I think one of the things about differences between now, and I think, okay, we look back at our grandparents, and I've always said this, we, you know, when we go, okay, well, you're a bunch of racists and you treat your women that way. I mean, if we're not careful, what are our kids going to look back at us and say, you just ruined the planet, didn't leave us anything? That's yeah. why I think it's all, like you said, we've got to be really careful because, you know, we haven't got the chances to sort of like, you know, like our grandparents just go, well, okay, everything we've done is in is in public like you like we just saying it's on twitter and stuff and that's the the thing that we've got to remember everything we're doing is is absolute legacies but the way around it i don't look look on the on the optim, the pessimistic style because i think one of the things that we all remember for this generation is that we actually did something and i think that's we are actually making a difference i mean i actually look and think yeah you know, i'm trying there, you know there, there are people that are leaving a, a, a world better for my son than than i walked into myself and I, I, I that's why i always don't get i think it's important to be realistic about the negatives but always say like hey we're in the greatest times and the greatest days ever because this has never been right. achievable right you, the hard part when I was at university was learning about all the all the negative things that were happening in the world. And, you know, we we spent, you know, four years at university and most of those years were spent focusing on the problems and learning what all the problems were, whether it was food, energy, transportation, you, you name it, pollution. Um, we spent so much time focused on that and it if I could go back to school and be a professor, I would teach a class called solutions. And all we would do is just focus on solutions because that's, we, I knew all the problems by my second year, or maybe, I don't wanna say I knew them all, but we had a grasp of them, right? But we just kept going deeper and deeper into the problems and, and we didn't, we spent some time on the solutions, but not enough. And that's where we need to get the kids the reason I'm in solar is because I was inspired by the solution. My, my thought was I like solar panels. It helps make renewable energy. It helps on that, uh, that side of the, the problem I, I'm helping. How do we get kids to keep doing that in, in for, for all the problems that we're learning about? So be realistic about the negatives, focus on the solutions and move forward, you know? Exactly, and I, I, it's, it's never forget this, my friend. And I think this is, it goes back to what we were saying earlier on. It is, the, and it's also people in the times we are now to inspire. That's exactly it. The, you know, it's doing things like this dude, because yeah, that's what we said. But I mean, you know, when I was at school, if I, you know, no one ever sat me down and said, "Oh, you could spend your life being," you know talking about solar panels. No, no, we, I'm showing your career teacher. I mean, but we need to like not only give that 
kids the options but they need to, to see like anything like that they need to see people who are doing it and this is the inspiring thing and that's what i always say to people that it's important that it's what you do right now and that's what i'm saying because it's you know there's no point in just talking good games that's what i love about people like yourselves and because you actually you're in that great tract of life for people who are actually doing stuff rather than just talking and that's the greatest uh, fuel for anybody to be inspired whether they're five years old or whether they're 60 is to look over and think oh he's doing something she's doing something i well what am i doing with my life and that to it, me is it, always the greatest inspiration it's contagious right like you should be spreading that spreading the change and it should be it's it's a contagious thing if if, if i can inspire some other people they'll inspire other people and that way we all move forward. It, exactly. And I think that when it comes down to the end of the day, my friend, it's, I mean, regardless of who you've got children or not, it's kind of like, well, don't we all want the best out of this world? I mean, that's, that's the point. We, we, the, we, the, we, oh, the, the solar energy one and that, but it's only kind of, if we get to the point, it's only just to make us enjoy this planet a bit more and, enlight, and enjoy life because that's, that's the only yeah. thing we've got. And that's the whole point of it, really, when it gets down to it is, you know, it's about trying to make this, it's it's that's one of the things that you know I, I speak upon a lot, and I think it's and that's, I think that's what I love about what we you know what this whole discussion is. It's there are things that unite us as human beings, and this, and and the world is focused, as you said, when you're at uni about the the the, the problems and the divisions. I mean, this this that's what I'm saying. That's what as you said before. That's what the kids get. They just realise like, wait a minute, we're all on one rock, and it's and that that I think is <laughs> such a shining message that needs to go through. But I don't think this is one thing before. This is maybe how I feel about. It. I don't think that kids, just as I said before, when I was a kid, I got it. I don't. I think anybody under twenty gets this completely, and it's only the only people that don't get it. And uh, to those that sound like the granddads, and I, I just think they, you know, that's none of us have got any excuse anymore because it, we, we haven't got. You know, that's what I say. When I people go to my age, and I say they go like, "Oh well," you know, I'm like, "Hey, you've got the internet as much as me. You need to wise up and do and cause action in this life as well." Right, right. It's we're all on one rock. You said it, and. It's, and we need to take care of it. We need to take care of each other and we need to enjoy our life, you know, and enjoying life is interacting with other people, interacting with the planet and, and trying to just create more good in the world, you know? Exactly. And, I, and I, you're absolutely right. Well, as you said before, you know, and we were talking just briefly before you left and before we just wrap this conversation up, I mean, you, you have a, and, and, and an absolute interest in you said you know we mentioned about climbing and rocks and stuff like that so, so but you know give me give me i mean what, what give me kind of like your best and your worst experiences climbing and maybe start off with the worst one man before you <laughs> we can finish on a highlight um well uh i've definitely been stuck on some rocks during some thunder and lightning storms that have been really scary <laughs> where the the metal that your all your climbing gear is buzzing and you've you feel like you're going to get zapped by lightning. I've had that happen a few times. Um, well, wait, 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 before you go any oh, further, yeah. on that, before you go any further on that one, okay, what's your natural reaction? Is it one of flee, one of fright? I mean, when you're stuck in a situation like that, what, what, what was your natural reaction? Uh, oh, how do I want to put this? Mm, there was some fear for sure. Uh, but there was mainly just like a resignation that there was nothing I could really do because you're, you're up on a rock. You're a hundred in the air. You, you can't just flee, you know, you're, <laughs> you're stuck. And so, you know, uh, you kind of just sit back and go, well, this is scary. And if I get through it, it'll be okay. And I'll, you know, have this. A life experience that most people don't have. Yeah, it it's kind of terrifying and enlightening at the same time. So it, that happens. <laughs> I, I think uh, yeah, I mean you're absolutely right, and I think one of the things about I, I think that what you just spoke about there is the very essence of life because I was, you know anybody I always say to people I. I know from living in cities, and I think one of the, the most unfortunate thing about people living in cities is they don't ever really go out and see. The, the 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 you know the nature and i think one of the things when you do step into nature particularly mountains and climbing rock particularly when you see a big rock or a big lump of rock you think, it just humbles you completely you think i'm just, just such a little speck on a little rock that's, you know and and it makes you feel really humble but the other thing as well about it it just 
it only makes you feel humble, but it's it's all that other side of it. It goes like, well, why was I taking it seriously? Why was I worried about the bills? Look at it. Look, I mean, I, you know, when you're just up there in that moment, and, it, and I, I, maybe I, a feeling I've always yeah. been, even just walking out somebody said, it's that whole thing of like, wait, you, there is a moment you just feel it's just me in the world. I, I, yeah. I don't think that's just an experience I have, but you just feel, and when you're on that experience, like I'm looking over vistas and, hey, there could have been some man or woman stood in exactly the same position as me as 10,000 years ago. And, and literally, they're not seeing much different. That is so, I don't know, the connection that you feel. And that's what I'm saying. Why people don't leave their cities and they all they want to do is get on a, on a subway, go home, then watch more TV and go to sleep and repeat. It's like, I don't understand that because it's like all the yeah. time they're doing that, as you know, life goes on and, and eventually we're going to end up six foot under and it's a bit like, what's the point? <laughs> Can't live like that. There's, there's no... There's just no way I could live that way. I need those experiences. I need those connective moments where you're connecting with either if you're connecting with people or if you're connecting with nature or the energy of the universe, you it you need that. Like all humans, I think need it. Um, just some more than others. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to go down that whole one, but I've, always, I've often thought, well, wouldn't it be a great? You know, there's people like. <laughs> Some of these people who are controlling us and that they need to, you know, like take a, for what a better word, take a chill pill and sit on top of them. Take a hike. <laughs> yeah, and take a hike, dude. Exactly it. Yep. Because they would suddenly realize good, that, good one where they're humbled and they're scared and they're enlightened all at the same time. And you well, know, it yeah. happens. It happens everywhere. Like you said, the the ocean is another example. I've had terrifying experiences on the ocean, and when you get out of them, you feel alive. You know, that, that's hard. You feel more alive, but you feel, feel, you know, that connection with other people. You feel that connection of survival with those other people. Exactly, and it, it it just makes you. Uh, I'm saying that that's a great thing. We like anything that makes you realize a how insignificant we are is is always a good thing for the soul because and, and say because it's nothing else. It makes you feel humble and, and and instantly, as you said, it connects you with every other human being, and suddenly you just realize. Well, well, well. And I think it's one of the greatest, and I, I, you're absolutely right, my friend. I think it sounds so simple, but if people just did take a walk, just it would do. I honestly, I think it would shift the whole of this 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 mad world just a little bit more because I think half the problem with people is they just they just take life too seriously, and then that's 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 I think that's the problem as well. They they're taking life too seriously, my friend. I think Kurt Vonnegut said that in a couple of his books, where he he was basically like, "Life isn't serious. That's don't don't be so serious. It's not life isn't serious. It's supposed to be fun." Exactly. So exactly. I, I'm all for anything that gets people out traveling or adventuring or just not being so serious. You know, we all have our responsibilities and things we need to do, but you know, work hard, play hard. They go together. Exactly, because you've only got one shot, my friend. Exactly. So, look, before we do wrap this up, and I want to thank you for the, you know, it's been a total, like a brief sure. sort of uh, conversation. I, I definitely want to, I definitely want to have you back on because um, I know we scratched upon, you know, scratched upon things like the solar panel. I, 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 I literally could talk to you for a whole conversation <laughs> just about, you know, going out and climbing rocks, my friend, because I think that's sure. a, that's a whole other avenue we could go down. But before we do finish this up. If um, where can people reach out and find out, you know, about the Mojo Box and about the Solar Works? And where can if people reach out there, where can they find you and get in contact with you? Um, so Solar Works uh, is my kind of my first baby, if you will. Um, and our website is DurangoSolarWorks.com. And um, generally, we service the Southwest Colorado and Four Corners area. Um, but you can see some of the projects we've done and, and what we're up to. Um, and then the second the, the second baby, if you will, is the is the Mojo box and the stuff that goes with that. And uh, you can find that on mojoproducts.us. And you can you can reach out to me through there or through the SolarWorks. Send me an email. Um, I'm happy to send you guys stuff wherever you are in the world. Well, perfect. And as I said before, I mean, I think again, and and I, I can only speak upon this again. You know, from you're a very open man, and you're open to you know get involved. And I think that's just the whole point. So I say to people, get involved. You know, we're, we're, you know, as you can see from our conversation, we're we're not monsters. We're not great. We're, we're we're open people. If you want to get involved, get involved. You're open to ideas. That's a very. Yep. 
the very theme of this conversation is that is that that's the kind of where we are in this world that people you know building stuff are open to new ideas and open to interaction that's very very inspiring anyway like i said it's been absolute yep. um insightful conversation tonight derek and i want to really want to thank you for your time because i know it's you know before yeah. midday you're, you're in your working day over there so um well it's been absolute thanks, thanks for having uh, us absolute, it's been great i look forward to doing it again perfect well like all the way from uh over here in scotland to all over in colorado i want to say life is people people life is people